Hello, everybody. What a GDMFN. I don't know how much I can swear on this Facebook Live without uh, without DSN getting mad at me. But what a win for Michigan State um, opening up the season with a quote-unquote road win against Northwestern. The reason I threw it in quotes was because they absolutely were in Evanston, Illinois. They were not in East Lansing. But it looked like they had maybe the home field advantage in this game. One, not only with how they played, but two, just with the crowd uh, in general. It was, I don't know if it was a majority Michigan State crowd, but it was uh, it was absolutely close to, to dead even, and I will say that. But Michigan State coming out with a strong, strong performance against Northwestern in the first game of the season. And if you remember, Michigan State only won two games last year. The first, or not the first one, excuse me, but one of the two being against a top 10 Northwestern team um, who Michigan State actually gave their only Big Ten loss to. So if you're Northwestern, you have every reason to come out here and avenge this loss and not take it as a like a look ahead game or a quote unquote trap game is what you'll hear if you tune into like college game day, uh, you know, tomorrow, um, you know, they'll talk about trap games a bunch and teams that, oh, maybe they're facing this team, but they're facing this team the week after. So they're not really focused on the matchup ahead of them. With Northwestern, there was none of that. So don't let anybody sell you on the fact that Northwestern wasn't all pumped up for this game. One, it was the season opener. Two, it was at home. And three, it was a team that beat you last year when you were uh, in the in the AP Top 10, right? The highest that probably any of us can ever remember Northwestern being ranked. So with that being said, Northwestern took this game absolutely as seriously as you could and if they didn't then they're a fraud program coached by a fraud coach right so for michigan state to go in there and just manhandle them the first like the first play from scrimmage uh it was kenneth walker 75 yards boom touchdown michigan state up 7-0 immediately and it was absolutely uh, it was it was electric if you're a Michigan State fan because of what we went through last year, right? So the path of the Michigan State fan last year is uh, it's a little bit tricky in that you, we lost a lot of games, right? We only played eight of them, but we lost six of them. But the two that we won were against Michigan, which is what Michigan State fans, you know, it's the game that they want to win most. And then you had a win against a top 10 Northwestern team and then winning against those upper echelon teams are what you kind of grew accustomed to under Mark D'Antonio to so to see that Mel Tucker could uh, could do that it was a little bit of a, you know a little bit of a welcome sight but then they lost the other six so you might not have felt you know too great about it and then for this game to be again on the road a conference game at night to go into Evanston, um, to go into Ryan Field, which certainly is not the most intimidating place um, at all to play for Michigan State to win. Um, it was a, a great start to the season. And if you were one of the people that were more optimistic on Michigan State's chances this year, you know, a lot of their season projections were from eight and four all the way down to like four and eight. And so if you're going to take the middle of that, it's probably around six and six. So if you took them at the six and six, maybe this is one of the games that you had them losing, right? Or it was at least certainly a toss up game where they had that first game um, and they were going to be playing Northwestern. And now they have that game out the way. Not only did they win, they ended up dominating. So does that change your outlook on the season as a whole? Uh, you know, it, it might, obviously, but if you had them at that 8-4 and four kind of high mark, then I don't think this did anything to diminish your confidence uh, even, uh, even a little bit. Uh, Brad said he is drunk, but the coherency is still there. That is one thing I will cop to. Um, 
you know, I, I, I had fun watching the Michigan State opener. It was a game that I was very excited about. I've been very excited about this entire season. I've been very excited about the Mel Tucker tenure. Um, since he's been coming, I don't know how m m much of you, uh, you know, care about the recruiting aspect of it. But one thing that was notable, at least, was Northwestern was hosting this week one of Michigan State's top uh, one of Michigan State's top recruits for 2023, like one of their top targets. And even before this game kicked off, there was a lot of speculation that Michigan State might kind of take the stadium over. Right? It wasn't going to be a 80-20 Northwestern split. At best, it might be 60-40 Northwestern, but it might also be you know kind of 50-50, and you don't know where it's going to go. So for them to host one of the recruits that they should know, right, with all their coaches and with all the guys who kind of analyze recruiting, that Northwestern should know that Michigan State is going out. Um, and they're also, you know, targeting one of their top targets. Northwestern ended up hosting them this weekend. Um, and it's one of Michigan State's top targets as well. Michigan State, not only, you know, do, do they wax that ass, right? Uh, Michigan State came out and they absolutely dominated Northwestern. But I'm sure there was a lot of Northwestern fans who probably left early. So towards the end of the game, you probably did have more of a Michigan State um, presence in the crowd. Right, because if you're a Michigan State fan, unless you live in Chicago, you had to travel there, so you're not in any hurry to get home. Which means at the end of the game, instead of being maybe 70 30 or 60 40 Northwestern, you're at 55 45 Michigan State or even 60 40 Michigan State, and that's what that recruit is seeing on your home campus. And that was just one guy that at least we knew of. Um, for the 2023 class, but it, it shows a lot of, you know, Pat Fitzgerald and Northwestern to go ahead and recruit for Michigan State to not only lose to them so gracefully, uh, but to bring that recruit into an environment where it was pro Michigan State. Um, and that that is obviously big moving forward. But the, the biggest thing is the win. Right, where not even the atmosphere so much because if Northwestern ended up running over Michigan State, the the sixty forty split in the fan base wouldn't have mattered even a little bit. It was more so just that uh, Michigan State was able to come up and and you know really take it to Northwestern really from beginning to end because like you know on that first drive they had that seventy five yard Kenneth Walker touchdown, and then Michigan State went up fourteen to zero. Um, at halftime, I believe it was 14-7. to seven. Um, And then Michigan State was really just kind of able to roll from there. And the game was never really it, – it was, it was never really in threat. I know there was a time where it was like 17-7 to seven and Northwestern was kind of driving. Um, but Michigan State being able to uh, – to thwart that, I thought said a lot about their defense. And, you know, if we're going to be honest, it was a team that had a lot of questions coming into this year, of course. One, we didn't know who the starting quarterback was going to be until probably about 10 minutes. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I got the I got the ESPN stuff up for the, for the stat line. So I'm sorry if you can hear if you can hear all this. Let me pause that. But the starting quarterback, it wasn't announced until about 10 minutes before the game actually kicked off, right? There was the debate between Anthony Russo, the ten, uh, the transfer from Temple, and, uh, and Peyton Thorne, who obviously was at Michigan State last year and has been, you know, in the, in, in the Spartan program um, since he's been on campus. They ended up going with Peyton Thorne. Anthony Russo got one pass attempt, and to his credit, he didn't complete it, you know, uh, for 17 yards. But it was Peyton Thorne was the guy through and through, and he played pretty well. But the real star of the game, obviously, was Kenneth Walker, um, the transfer from Wake Forest, the at running back, who ended up going. Uh, I just want to make sure I get the I get the numbers right here. Um, so Kenneth Walker had 23 carries for 264 yards and four touchdowns. So that's an 11 and a half uh, average, you know, yards per carry, which if you're a football fan, I'm sure I don't need to tell you, it means every time he touched the ball, 
he got a first down. Now, even if you took away that 75-yard run, which was his longest run, and if you're going to do how effective a running back was, it's usually a good practice to take away that longest run because most of the times it's an outlier. And in this game, it was an outlier. It was a 75-yard touchdown run, which, of course, you're not going to get every game. Um, and in this game, isn't even necessarily indicative of how effective the the runner was right so but even if you take away the 75 yard gain he was still at 22 carries for about 190 yards which is still in an amazing pace i think it's about eight and a half yards a carry um to be honest we kind of prep this before before the game ended because we we knew the outcome already um, and it was actually before his fourth touchdown that we that we uh, ended up prepping this. So he was around eight and a half yards per carry without that seventy-five yard uh, without that seventy-five yard carry that he had. Right. So if you take away his longest carry, um, he was still giving you almost a first down every time that he touched the ball, which is obviously something you're going to take. Now, Northwestern last year they were six and one in conference. I believe they were seven and two uh, overall for their record. They were uh, they were a pretty good team, but they were a team to go into this year that was targeted for regression, right? If you're going to look at the teams that had like the best chance to not be as good as they were last year. I think Northwestern was probably at the top of that list. Um, and if you're looking just in the Big Ten Conference, they were certainly at the top of that list um, to not be as good as they were last year. So this year, uh, I'm sorry, so for this game, this was obviously the first test. Both teams, they played a conference game, um, but it was a game Northwestern was favored in. I believe the line closed at three and a half. Um, Northwestern so it was supposed to be a close game just you know in, in general and Michigan State ended up making it not that at all which I think if you are a Michigan State fan like me obviously right I got the hat I got the Drew Stanton jersey even if you guys can't see the number five I'm sure you could tell it was a Drew Stanton jersey right off the bat um, if you're a Michigan State fan that had to make you feel great right that they just went in North Northwestern and they they punked them they treated them like the whipping boy that they kind of always have been to Michigan State and they didn't play around they got up 14-0 it got to 14-7 and then that was really the closest that it got um you know Michigan State didn't play around the offense didn't play around if you're looking you know kind of at a quote unquote quarterback controversy Peyton Thorne ended up uh, 15 to 25 for 185 yards, not the best completion percentage, um, but I thought he was more than serviceable. He he probably missed a touchdown if you're going to look at just all the throws you know that he missed and then he made. But honestly, unless you're one of these top you know five quarterbacks in college football, you're probably going to miss some of those throws that uh, people, especially if you're going back and like watching on tape. If you're DVRing this game and you rewind it, or if you end up uh, watching the game on YouTube, you're going to see some throws that Peyton Thorne missed. Uh, but that would be, again, the case with any college quarterback, unless they were, you know, viable to kind of be like a top pick in the NFL draft. So that's not something that's too concerning. You know, you, you don't want your quarterback missing touchdowns ever. And I do think that with Russo's experience, if he had seen some of those throws and some of those looks that Thorne had seen, he might have made a, a better throw or a more correct throw and gotten the touchdown in that aspect. But I don't think you can really have any uh, any problems with the way that that Thorne played tonight, right? He had, you know, he he only ran at five yards, and at the end of the day, I think they're probably pretty equal in arm talent if Russo is not just a little bit better. Um, but what Thorne gives you that Russo really doesn't is the threat on the ground. Um, so today Russo, or I'm sorry, Thorne showed that. He had 28 yards rushing, um, but he did have an 18-yard run, which is obviously you know uh, good for a first down. 
um, but can really flip field position. They can flip a drive. And if you're a team that's, you know, deciding between two quarterbacks and they're equal in what they can do with their arm, if one of them can run, that's probably the one you're going to end up going with. And, you know, obviously, to be just to be fair to uh, Payne Thorne, he was good with his arm today. Um, 15 completions for 185 yards is really nothing to sneeze at. He did only have the one touchdown um, pass, but they ran for four touchdowns as well. So they were able to get down into the red zone and, uh, you know, multiple times and get down to, and get down, excuse me, kind of into those scoring zones um, to where I think maybe they showed their hand a little bit um, to where they want to they want to run the ball and they want to establish the run. Um, so for this year, if you're just looking, you know, further into the year, or into Big Ten, into Big Ten Conference or whatever, uh, when Michigan State gets into that red zone, when they get into kind of that like first and goal from the five, their their first option is going to be to run the ball, right? Because you have Ken, uh, you have Kenneth Walker, you have guys like Harold Joyner, um, you have Jordan Simmons, excuse me. Uh, you even have Connor Hayward, who converted to tight end today, and wasn't too bad. He had three catches for 28 yards, um, but is a guy who we obviously know has has played running back before, and would probably be comfortable playing running back um, in the future. So I think that is a really unique uh, look that Michigan State could have near the goal line, um, just with kind of what they can do, where if the talent isn't necessarily there to have a high touchdown percentage when you get, you know, in the red zone, um, I think the offensive uh, plays might be creative, creative enough, excuse me, that Michigan State can, uh, can score more touchdowns than maybe they should. Uh, let me just look at some of the comments here because I've been talking a lot. And, uh, again, if you guys have not, uh, if you guys don't know who I am, that's totally fine. You, you probably don't. Um, but you can go on the, uh, on the Detroit Sports Nation page and th- and look up the Sports Carnage podcast page that's also on Facebook that should be linked in the description there. Uh, we did a whole Big Ten preview, um, yesterday. It should be out probably tomorrow. Um, so you'll get it probably before the Michigan the Michigan game starts um, and then you'll be able to hear all of our thoughts not just mine because obviously I'm a biased Sparty fan right so if you're a Michigan fan you don't want to hear from me at all um, but we have you know some Michigan fans and some Michigan State fans on our podcast so I think it's a nice balance um, so listen listen to that uh, when it drops and that will be available obviously here on Detroit Sports Nation but on Spotify and Apple and wherever else you listen to your podcast but let me see some of the comments here because you guys have been asking me questions and selfishly I've just been talking uh, Brad said he is drunk but the coherency is still there uh, again that that is probably true um, I was I was very excited for the Michigan State opener and I, I did indulge in some libations there Brad so you are correct but I like to think I'm still coherent I like to think you can know what I say and if you can't let me know in the comments and we can address it and maybe I can clear some things up for you Walter says one you are hammer wasted two stay played well but guess what Northwestern played like absolute garbage and that is one thing that I do want to make clear and Walter thank you for pointing that out is nobody is saying that Northwestern is, you know, Ohio State or anything like that. But if you looked at the schedule to start the year, if you were going to look at the, the losable games for Michigan State, one of them that you would have, you know, almost certainly had would have been Northwestern. You would have said this is one of the games that Michigan State could lose. So at the very least, they passed that first test of them losing that game because they ended up, you know, dominating Northwestern um, really from from start to finish. So Northwestern did play like garbage, and I don't think they're a good team. They were a good team last year. I do think they're in line for some regression this year. But with that being said, again, uh, you know, being a Michigan State fan and not having any uh, grand illusions of them winning the Big Ten or making the college football playoff or anything like that, um, them 
proving that they're not the bottom of the Big Ten by beating Northwestern, to me at least, is uh, is a win for kind of where this program is right now, and it's a good sign moving forward. David White says give state credit, so kind of the opposite of what the, uh, the other two commenters have said. He said give state credit, they won't convincingly. I'll give Michigan straight Michigan State all the credit that they're due because I'm a big fan. Uh, Walter again said at least Michigan at least as a Michigan fan, I can understand that we are going to lose games again this year, but you want to look at this weak opponent effort and want to feel proud about dominating. Good gracious. I did put money on state, but this game should have been a three to seven point differential. That's all fine and good, Walter, but guess what? It wasn't three to seven points. Michigan State ended up winning, I believe, the final score. Um, I believe they ended up winning by 17 points. Yep, 38 to 21. So even if even if you put money on Michigan State and, it, hey, Walter, go out, get your money, win all those bets, I wish you all the best. And if you want some expert opinions, right, we do picks on our podcast one of the picks, of course, was the Michigan State versus Northwestern game. I had Michigan State not only covering the spread, but winning outright. So, Walter, me and you, we're, we're right on the same page there. Uh, you Again, you just have to be excited about a game that you were favored to lose and you end up winning by 17 points. I think you can even say, as a Michigan fan, if there was any game this year that you were favored to lose by three and you won by 17 you would be ecstatic, right? I I assume Michigan will probably be, a, if they're not an underdog against Washington, it will be close, right? It will probably be one and a half to maybe three points either way uh, when they play Washington week two. And in good conscience, I would not believe Walter to be a man who, if Michigan were to beat Washington by 17 points, would say, oh, Washington's just garbage, so that doesn't really count. So that part of the comment, um, uh, I'm not really rocking with. I don't believe Northwestern to be good, but I believe them to be about on par with Michigan State, and for them to be on par with Michigan State, and for Michigan State to dismantle them like that, um, that is something that I, I will take pride in, and I will get excited in, because, again, I'm not saying Michigan State is on the level of Ohio State or Alabama or Clemson or whoever else you want to name. But for Michigan State to come out and show and to dominate Northwestern, you know, a team that was objectively good last year and has a – right, they have a good coach. Pat Fitzgerald has been at Northwestern for – this is his 15th year, I believe, being at Northwestern. And he has generally been regarded as a, a good coach in the Big Ten. So for Michigan State to come out here and beat that team, uh, you know, a well-coached team, unless you think Pat Fitzgerald is just a bum, to beat a well-coached team by 17 points, that does say something about the program and where uh, Mel Tucker has the team headed. Even if it doesn't say that they're a national championship contender, I think it does speak well of the program overall. David White says, drink one more for Mel. You absolutely know I will. Uh, Scott Wiley says, Northwestern sucks. Thank you for your input, Scott. I, I actually do agree with you. Um, on our last podcast we did, which isn't out yet, but it should probably be out tomorrow, we talked about Big Ten teams that were uh, kind of ripe for regression, and uh, Northwestern was one of those teams that that I pegged for that. Fred Bueller, go green, absolutely. Uh, Michigan who? There we go, my man. He said, you better be hammered, go green. I, I really like Fred uh, over here in the comments. He says, hope we are back. More to come, but feels good. It does feel good. And for Michigan State, the next test comes, you know, week three. And I'll be here tomorrow um, in all likelihood to break down the Michigan game. So don't think that Detroit Sports Nation is just heavily Michigan State focused and there's nobody here to talk about what Michigan does, right? Tomorrow, I know I'm in my Michigan State garb now. I make no secret about it. I personally am a huge Michigan State fan, as you guys can obviously tell. 
but I will be watching the Michigan State, or I'm sorry, the Michigan and Western Michigan game tomorrow, and I'll be on here the, all the same, right? Breaking down, telling you what I liked, what I didn't like, and kind of giving you the analysis from there. One thing that I try and do is give you the analysis game by game as opposed to giving you the analysis uh, from like a season outlook. Um, and what I mean by that is say Michigan State was mid-2010s uh, level where you thought they might win the Big Ten. So this game might have been a disappointment because they didn't win by, you know, how much they should or whatever. Like that's not the type of content that I'm going to be bringing you. Um, I'm going to really just kind of tell you game by game what it is. What did Michigan State show in this game and what did Michigan show in this game without really bringing in any of the preseason factors into it because honestly as much as a lot of us think that we like to uh, as much as we think that we know about some of these teams and some of their offseason doings and who is going to start where and you know what players better than who we really don't know a thing until we see them play on Saturday so and in this case, obviously Friday. Um, so that's the the kind of content that at least we want to bring here. Um, you know, we can't speak for any other outlets, but for uh, for us, we want to focus on what the teams have actually done. So there's going to be a similar kind of breakdown or analysis, whatever you want to call it, tomorrow for the Michigan Western Michigan game. Um, so don't think that we're that we're super biased uh, with with what we have going on. Um, but Michigan State obviously had the the bigger game this week in that they were playing a conference opponent, and Michigan is obviously playing uh, a directional school here in the state in Western Michigan. But we will have that same content for you tomorrow, um, and then we should have that content for the Lions games as well. Excuse me. Um, Denise says, this is just good reporting. I appreciate you, Denise. And Fred says that the O-line, uh, and he had the patience of Le'Veon Bell, uh, I, I, so I tweeted this and again, a couple people have pointed out that, um, I may have been drunk off the excitement of Michigan state, but I really do think that Kenneth Walker is probably the best running back that we've had in the state. So, you know, Michigan, Michigan state, central Western, if that's your jam, um, really since Le'Veon Bell, because I just think he's that good of a individual running back talent. Now, obviously, we'll see tomorrow. Hassan Haskins, you know, there's a lot of a uh, the, there's a lot of hype, obviously, around him. Um, Zach Charbonnet transferred out, so it's it's Hassan Haskins, it's Blake Corum, and then it's you know a true freshman Donovan Edwards. So we'll see how that works out for Michigan. But I really do think that Michigan State got a got a steal in Kenneth Walker. Obviously, it's not a permanent fix because he's not a guy that's going to be here for four years like, you know, a, a Donovan Edwards type might be. Um, but I really do think that Kenneth Walker is a very good running back. And we see it uh, right here on this ESPN stat that I see on my TV. 250 rushing yards and four touchdowns uh, in, the, in a Big Ten game um, since 2010. Kenneth Walker has one tonight, and then Melvin Gordon has two in 2014 for Wisconsin. And if you know anything about Wisconsin, you know they love to run the ball. Uh, so for Melvin Gordon to, I'm sorry, for Melvin Gordon, for Kenneth Walker to do what he did tonight is really impressive by any standard that you measure it by. And you might just say, hey, it's Northwestern. They're a bad defense. Any running back could have, do, could have done this all good and well, what I would uh, counter with is no running back did this against Northwestern last year, and no running back has done this in the conference since 2014, which is kind of a long time to just say anybody could do this. So even if you were hating on the performance a little bit, uh, I think Kenneth Walker did enough to earn potentially Big Ten Player of the Week honors. Um but to showcase at least himself as somebody that's going to be up for, you know, all Big Ten mentions at the end of the year. 
let's see what else we have go green okay so that's about all the comments that we have um and we're kind of dwindling on the viewers here a little bit too so we will be back tomorrow for michigan and northwestern i probably won't be wearing lists because it'd be pretty disgusting if i was but for anybody still listening go ahead and make sure that you are subscribing to the sports carnage podcast you can find that on both uh, apple Podcasts as well as spotify now um and then look for us on YouTube, which this video will be on YouTube, as well as some of our other post-game reactions. Um, the Michigan and Western Michigan game will be on YouTube as well. Uh, but just make sure you search us on YouTube at Sports Carnage Podcast, and then you'll see us and you'll see our videos, our reactions, our breakdowns, our podcasts, and all of that. Um, so I have been, uh, I've been Ryan with Sports Carnage. I appreciate everyone who tuned in and who commented tonight, whether you were telling me that Michigan State sucks um, and Northwestern was nothing to ride home about, or whether you were telling me this means, you know, Kenneth Walker's going to win the Heisman. We appreciate all the feedback that we get here. So for Ryan Griffin, for Sports Carnage, for Detroit Sports Nation, thank you all so much for tuning in and have a good and safe night.